Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are taking a look at the Adonax Colossus Squadrons, which is the latest release to the Enlightened Faction for Dystopian Wars, and this box has been kindly sent to me by War Cradle Studios for review. And if you're unfamiliar with these squadron boxes, these are the smallest boxes made by War Cradle Studios for the game. It shows you on the backside how many you get of them, which is three. And uh, yeah, the, these do not have the sort of typical sleeve and box setup. You just fold these open and then you can find the baggie of resins that can be found uh, to make all of the different models, along with a little pamphlet that uh, gives you a QR code that links to all the different build instructions for your models, along with the rules. And there's also one in there for Armored Clash, which is the land version of this game, which will be coming out this summer. Now both of these games are set in the dystopian age, which is very much what this channel is focused around. So if you want to learn more about both types of games, make sure that you subscribe to the channel for any future videos. Now let's talk about what's found inside of this baggie of resin. First there is one sprue which is uh, there twice, which has these different um, engine systems that will need to be glued to the resin hulls. Like I said you get two of them because they uh, they do have a lot of them, all of them will need to slot into those uh, small pegs and then the other parts of the sprue will be needed to be glued into the front of them uh, to form the new weapon systems found on them. So you're going to have to cut all of these out individually, take off the the little sprue gate and uh, clean them up a bit to glue them down preferably with some uh, gel super glue because that always holds better but if you want a really tight join you can always put a bit of green stuff in between there as well i suspect the gel super glue will hold but yeah we'll uh, we'll have to see if it starts snagging off i'm putting in a bit of green stuff just to make sure now these hulls, there's three of them, are roughly the same size as the sort of larger cruisers that you can find for most factions. This is a uh, Katanga, uh, which is uh, for the Commonwealth. And as you can see, once you start gluing on the uh, weapon front, they will be roughly the same size. Now in terms of the weapon front, these are the main weapon systems. Now those do have a bit of flashing. It's fairly easy to clean up though. If you get a bit of a wire brush even, or uh, a uh, craft knife to clean that up, it shouldn't be too difficult and then you just have to snap them off uh, clean up the little contact areas and just dab a bit of super glue in between uh, both the main hull and those different parts um, which will take a while let's be honest but uh, it's not the most difficult bit of assembly that you can do and uh, yeah there's basically two of them rinse and repeat I'll just go and assemble the models and show you what they look like After assembly, this is pretty much what you end up with. It's uh, gotten a bit longer. You can still see that uh, particle beamer uh, hiding out in uh, in between them. And uh, with the weapon systems uh, glued on there, yeah, they pretty much match the bigger Mass 2 ships that you can find in the game. And yeah, so you get three of them in one of these boxes. And I also want to make a comparison with the Cheyenne. These are uh, a bit more narrow and a smaller version of these. So uh, I had anticipated that they would be very similar to the tail end of the Cheyenne. But no, this is definitely a thing of its own. As it also has more articulating joints in it. Um, it's about half the size of the Mass 4, which is what you would expect for a Mass 2 ship. And uh, well, they are incredibly similar in design. So uh, they almost look like they are made to be played alongside with this ship. And uh, the rules pretty much reflect that as well, which is what we'll be discussing a bit later in the video. Now, in case you did not know, the War Cradle Studios games very much take the living rule set approach. And so their rules are regularly updated all together at some point to make sure that there is not too much of a power creep going on but also when new releases are made such as these the orbats which you would call a codex if you're more familiar with uh, games workshop games are updated um, to reflect these changes and uh, yeah i will be talking about what i plan to do with them in my future list in terms of the, the rules for these models, uh, they uh, they were just updated in the most recent Orbat for the Enlightened, which is version 3.06, which went live about a week ago. And uh, it's the Aronax Vermiforma Colossus Automata clocking in at 139 points for each one of them. Now, first of all, they are automata, so they uh, gel very well with the autonomous research uh, battle fleet, which has now been turned into a main battle fleet. So these are more easily to integrate with uh, the Shion, uh, the design that they have so much in common with. 
These models are actually quite unique because they are not colossi that are typical submarauders. These are deployed using the Silent Stalker rule. And if you do not know what a Silent Stalker is, it is a unit that can be deployed anywhere at least 20 inch from the enemy deployment zone. And if you deploy a unit as a Silent Stalker, it will also gain the homing qualities to any attack with the torpedo quality until the end of the round. And that's pretty damn good because these units come equipped with the Precognizant Torpedo Salvo, which is pretty much the enlightened version of the Heavy Torpedo Salvo that can be found in other factions. The Precognizant Torpedo Salvo fires generally with 11 dice as its lead value and then 6 dice in support. They are special that they do not have the extreme range quality but they do get the sustained keyword. Add to that the homing quality that you can get from turn 1 and you're pretty much re-rolling blanks and a different token of your choice which means that those torpedoes are going to become quite efficient. If you take a unit of 3 of these they're going to be firing at the enemy with 11 plus 6 plus another 6 meaning 23 dice with both re-rolling blanks and the sustained that's going to do a significant amount of damage. But if you were just paying 139 points for some uh, heavy torpedo salvos with some juicy rerolls, that would be a bit much. So there is a lot more to them. They also have the uh, hydrothermic borer. So if they want to ramp, they can in a subsequent turn. They have a hull uh, of uh, four in their battle ready status. So they can do not the most devastating ram out there, but at least they can function that way as well if you want it. But the really juicy thing is that they have a heavy conodontic flenser on top of those precognizant torpedo salvos. We will be taking a look at that weapon shortly but it is a torrent weapon basically and uh, these things do not move lightning fast, they only move at uh, 7 inches every turn um, which is probably a bit safer for your opponent because uh, well getting hit with torrent weapons in turn 1 can always hurt a lot. Um, there's also a bit of a difficulty just teleporting these towards the enemy, you are going to have to use that uh, torrent attack probably in the second turn but you do not have to fear because the flensing maw allows you to use a valor effect which allows you to shoot that heavy conodontic flenser with uh, the heavy particle cannon stat instead giving you access to a very lovely blast attack at medium range on top of the heavy torpedo salvos and your opponent is of course going to have to worry about you being able to clear out quite a bit in the first turn. And if you're unfamiliar with the Enlightened list, the Heavy Conodontic Flenser is something that shoots as a main weapon with uh, 8 dice and has 5 in support, so you can get a torrent with up to 18 dice, which is pretty rough, especially because it also comes with a devastating keyword, meaning that all of your exploding hits are going to count for 3 hits rather than the usual 2. Now these weapons obviously are for when you get really close to the opponent. The other profile that you get to use is the heavy particle cannon. That one is a bit of a mix in terms of stats. It doesn't shoot very well at long ranges, but you're not really expected to be at a long range when this unit activates because, well, you're allowed to deep strike, if you will, to 20 inch from the enemy deployment zone. So uh, yeah, you're probably never going to be using that stat mark. At closing range though, with 9 and 6, that means that you can have a hefty 21 dice with a blast marker available to you, uh, along with a piercing quality as well, which is quite strong. You just have to make sure that you sort of mention this to your opponent, perhaps, to during the deployment phase because otherwise uh, he might not uh, yeah, might not view that as very good sportsmanship. Now Blast is one of those qualities that is uh, at turn 1 quite easy to negate if you're a bit of a competent opponent by spreading uh, a bit much but yeah it does come in quite clutch during the mid game and uh, seeing how these things are fully submerged units they're going to be quite hard to be taking out as well so that's a good thing going for them. You can of course still use your heavy particle blast at uh, point blank range but that is less likely to be uh, relevant because at that point I would just be swapping over to the torrent version and uh, just using that one instead. But yeah the heavy particle cannon at uh, point blank range has a 6 main uh, weapon and 4 in support so you can still do a pretty significant 14 dice blast but again you're probably going to want to use that torrent uh, template when you get to that uh, stage. 
Now, of course, all this talk about uh, a Valor effect might be useless if you're uh, facing something with Fortunes of War, but the good news is this uh, unit does have a response to that because uh, it has a deep dive rule. Now, the deep dive rule means that you will not be moving a lot except for just doubling your uh, drift, meaning that this unit would only move four inches. But that means that you only get to attack with any uh, submerged weapons. Luckily, this one comes equipped with those uh, precognizant torpedo salvos that are spruced up a bit with the silent stalker rule so it's not the end of the world and the great thing about deep diving is that your opponent won't be able to attack the unit with anything but attacks that have the submerged keyword so they are very well protected to strike in turn two with also torrent weapons and potentially blast weapons in case the rest of your force manages to uh, shut down the opposing forces uh, fortunes of warships or uh, units and half things such as devil's own luck etc etc and like I said, the list I will be experimenting with is the Autonomous Research Battle Fleet, where you can take the Cheyenne class as your uh, lead uh, flagship. And that one is going to come with six of those uh, annoying little Euripides uh, automotive submarines that are going to be deployed close by. It is now fully within five inch of that Cheyenne that they need to be deployed, so you can't just conga line straight into the enemy deployment zone. However, that doesn't really matter because you're going to have a situation where you have a lot of threat saturation that's going to be quite close up to the enemy if you use that Cheyenne in conjunction with these new Colossi. Uh, so yeah, you're going to be quite close by. The one thing that this list will have as a vulnerability is uh, a lot of aerial units that it can face because you're relying a lot on submerged weapons. Uh, but luckily, there's been a few buffs as well to uh, ships to counter those aerial units. So I might be adding those in as well to counter that one. One of the mandatory units in this uh, battle fleet is the Origin Lath ship, which is one that uh, actually repairs destroyed automata. If they are mass one, of course, they won't be uh, repairing your uh, mass to uh, Colossi. But if they are mass one, they can actually be repaired by them. And that means that I will be pairing them with some uh, Merian frigates, or rather going for some of the other build options, such as the Germain pattern for those. The Germain pattern, as you can see, comes equipped with a particle beamer, which is a weapon that shoots just as well at long range as it does at closing range, so that might pose a bit of extra threat to any aerial units flying around. One particular other unit I will be adding to this force or starting to experiment with is the Cotillion Bombardment Cruiser clocking in at 135 points now. They no longer have these weird rockets with the blast markers. Um, I think that's covered by the new Colossi to be honest with their uh, potential Valor effect if you're looking for some uh, AOE damage. Uh, they now swap to regular rocket batteries and heavy rocket batteries all with a neat 360 v uh, degree uh, field of fire which is quite nice. In addition the thing that sets them apart is they now have the Tyndall Cyclonic Augurs which means that all of their aerial quality attacks, meaning their rockets, will gain the extreme range quality, high velocity, meaning that double counters will be downgraded to single counters if your opponent tries to defend against them, and also the piercing qualities. So that makes them quite good at hunting down some aerial targets that your opponent might have. In addition, should they be firing at regular ground units, surface units, etc., they also have the bombardment quality with their aerial weapons, meaning they also get to reroll their blank results when they do. And there we have it, that is the review of both the models for uh, the new release and uh, the new rules coming along with them. It's nice that they were uh, updated ahead of the release schedule as well, so you can discuss this in these uh, videos as well, along with some fun little list build ideas that you can have with them. So if you like that little uh, snippet of extra information in the videos, make sure that you let me know in the comments below, and then I uh, do hope to see you in the next review video. Until then, bye!